Hallelujah, Jesus. Blessed. Thank you, you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Hallelujah. And it's all in all to be happy, praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Um, you have a closing um, remark, sister. Um, um, blessings, everyone, again. Yes, at this time, I mean, we just want to continue and to encourage um, each of us um, on this media today to just uh, um, walk in God's presence, walk with God. Um, let God. Um, mm lead us let him direct our path um let him teach it, teach us his way and um let us be, be be willing and 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 able to just do what he has instructed um us to do let us just um keep um be affixed um in god's presence in everything we do and let us continue to listen to his voice because he's always talking to us he's always instructing us he's always um um leading us to the part in which um he wants us um to go he have a desire for each and every one of us and i mean um my desire um, or the desire of god for me might not be the same desire for somebody else so let us our hearts and our mind on Christ and walk upright with God. Walk in his presence. Let our thought be of God. When we wake up in the morning, let us focus on Christ. You know, in everything we do, let us just put God first. Walk holy with God. Walk worthy with God. Everything, just let us put God first in every single thing that we do continue Amen. to pray continue to fast seek help i mean if you're 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 struggling get involved in in any program or anything that you can because knowing that it's a time where um we are we are we have been given to 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 use it and i mean time last will never come back again so this time that we have um on our hands let us just use it for, for, for God's ministry, for God's work, you know, in everything we do, every action, every words that come about us of our mouth. Let us, let us ask God to, to, to process it first before we are uttered it, we Amen. utter it out of our, 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 our mouth. I mean, last night I hear a saying, um, the person said, and I need to, to, to take this to heart too, um, we should always speak the truth or what is right. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember, the, um, but I, I will try and explain what I'm saying. Just so we should always speak the truth or speak the right thing. But in other words, she's saying, even though sometimes we speak the right thing or we speak the truth, um, not all the times um, the truth is to be said. Um, if I... You know, I mean, even though sometimes we know it's the truth, I mean, sometimes we have to find ways to really um, come out with, with stuff because we don't want to, to, to as Brother Ray always talk about, um, show offense and stuff like that. But I mean, just find a godly way that in everything we do, let it be godly. Let it be, un, um, um, let it be something that God would do. So let us process it, or ask God to process it first, not to, to be quick to our hasten to, to, to act, but let God be, um, speak before us. We should always just be servant, his followers. So just let us follow God and lead um, and, 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 and be, be behind him at all times. Let him, give him the glory, give him the praise, give him everything because he's the one that, um, should be victorious in all of this you know so um those are my few words and um right now i think um um if brother ray is online um uh, minister ray is online um we can just um hand over to him so he can lead us into the next segment of um this day's uh, um um proceedings thank you sister um thank you um first lady McHugh. Yes, brother ray Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Um, I'm, 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 sorry, sorry, um, Brother Ray. Um, sorry, before um, you come on, um, I just want to thank um, everyone on the line this morning who have helped me to 
um, to bring forth, um, to, 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 or to bring forth the proceedings, you know, all the testimonies, all the songs, all the advice, everything. I just want to thank you all for helping me out this morning um, with these proceedings. All right, yes. Brother Ray, over to you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, well, thank God for that, Sister Santos. Thank you for leading out the uh, morning session this morning, um, fasting today. I, I am not sure what, what else to say after such um, stirring encouragement. Uh, indeed, so much was said today that I am, to be honest, I am very happy. I'm very happy to know that um, some of the stuff that have been taught are being utilized. Um, as simple as talking about the blood of Jesus and the purpose uh, for which it is used, um, that, that was an excellent, excellent example of what the blood of Jesus is used for. It is used for covering. It is used for redemption. And so to hear the, the practicality of it, I am thankful. Um, and I know many others as well have shared um, have shared that thing. I am not um, joy than to see his children walk and shoot. Um, in speaking about children, he was primarily speaking about those that are under his teachings that have been saved under his ministry. And so as a teacher myself, I am elated to know that the tools that I am given uh, have been helping individuals. Amen? Amen. So we give God thanks for that. Father, I thank you even now as we're about to go down into this word and to share a thought. I pray, O oh God, that you help us. I pray, O oh God, that you lead us. I pray, O oh God, Jesus, that you just open our understanding that we might hear and understand that which you have spoken to us. In Jesus' name. Um, so it's official. They they uh, contacted me yesterday, and so I will be going back into the office um, next Monday. So I am not certain how that transition will be, how convenient that will make things to be on this line. But I am confident in what I've heard today. I know that I can turn over to Sister Santos um, to teach next week, or Sister Marcia, or Sister Chantal. Um, I see Brother Kevin here, and I'm confident that um, Brother Odain will be able to teach as well. So. Um, Rotate. I'm not worried. Huh? It can rotate. Yes. Yes. So I'm not worried at all. But um, so just wanted to let you know that. All right. Uh, last week I shared a thought. I really did not um, allow for any discussions. Uh, and I apologize for that. It's because, uh, you know, um, I wanted to deal with the family, um, with what we were going through at that time. So I didn't want to be selfish to Sister Rush. Um, but we thank God that some person still called me uh, and asked questions. And so uh, just for educational purposes. I'm just going to share a little of those thoughts based on what was asked. Uh, one, one question that was asked um, 
is centered around how do we deal with um, those that seek to sabotage our name because we were talking about having a good name last week and how having a good name is associated with having um, a good character. Name is always associated with character. And so we will see, we would see oftentimes hear things like he's making a name for himself or, you know, he is, he, um, he has a name, right? It, it, it is really speaking to the person's character. What you're really saying is that that's a dedicated individual. That's, you know, um, you know, he's committed um, or she's committed in the, with whatever task that they want to uh, fulfill, as well as the person could be making a bad name for themselves or they have a bad character, they're a criminal. Um, or they they are a liar, or you, you you name it. Whatever whatever that person name is associated with, it somewhat becomes their character. And if we're not careful, that can tarnish. Um, if we if we are not careful, we can put out something outside that is not what uh, God desires. And likewise, we had shared in answering this question, how do we deal with uh, persons who want to tarnish our character or tarnish our name? We have to utilize the scriptures, the principle of the scriptures. Uh, I believe for everything in life, the scriptures give an answer. That's my personal belief, um, but I could be wrong, right? But one thing that I want to take us to, one place I want to take us to in answering that question is um, First Chronicles chapter 4. Let's go there, First Chronicles chapter 4, and we'll pick up about verse 9. The Bible said, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Notice, than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bear him in with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, who oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Look on this, the Bible said that he was more honorable than his brethren. And when you look on the Hebrew word there for brethren, it's speaking to his kindred, is speaking to his, um, his, his family. So in his family, they were considered the, um, the, the, the Calibite. So the family that he is from is considered the Calibite, which speaks to uh, a family that, um, of course, is out of Jerusalem, or they are from a town in Judea near Bethlehem. So they are Israelites, the, the Calibites, right? And these Calibites, they had a stigma associated with them. Um, they are also known as the Kenites. These men were evil men, right? They were considered wicked. But the Bible is saying here that even though he's from people that have a bad name, a tarnished character, the Bible is saying that this one individual was more honorable than all of them. 
So his name is saying that he is a, 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 a bad person. His name is saying that where he is from, uh, you know, in, in Jamaica, we grew up, we say, oh, they're from the ghetto. And once we associate them from coming from the ghetto, there's a certain stigma that is attached to the individual, right? And we can be fair here in, in saying this. And, and, and um, if there's a certain stigma that is, is, is associated with where they're from, we classify them. Not all of us intentionally know, just hear me. We classify them as, you know, that's a bad place. Stay far from that place. Don't go near the garrison, right? So this is the situation that Jabez was faced with. His character was tarnished, not because of his own doings, but because of a decision that his mother made. His mother called him Jabez, which meant sorrow, because she bore him in pain. This is sometimes why we have to be careful when we have our family members. We don't say things like, you're a murderer. You know, when we have our children, you don't say things like, you're a thief. Uh, you're a liar. You know, you, you, you paint an image of them based on a situation that they encountered when you could have used that opportunity for a means of correction. You understand what I'm saying? And so we must not um, tarnish as believers the character or the name of an individual. But at the same time, um, if I'm talking to anyone that all your life you have been tarnished, your name has been tarnished, you have been told that you're slow, you have been told that you are... Um, you're, you're not educated enough, you're not beautiful enough, you've been told that, uh, you know, it, it, you're, you're just not it. I want to tell you that that does not have to be your result. You can pray the prayer as Jabez, and the Lord will remove the, the, the stigma from your name. And whenever your name is called, the Bible will be able to say, you are more honorable. If we go to the book of Genesis chapter 37, Genesis 34, sorry, 34, and verse 19, still dealing with that one question, you'll be amazed. Um, how many things we got, I got here. Genesis 34 and 19. The Bible said, And the young man deferred not to do the thing, because he had delight in Jacob's daughter. And he was more honorable than all the house of his father. Again, the young man deferred not to do the thing because he had delight in Jacob's daughter uh, and he was more honorable than all the house of his father. What happened here? This young man is from um, is from the family of Shechem, right? They, they, they were a city that was against Jacob. And we know Jacob's name was changed to Israel, right? And Jacob's daughter, not many persons speak about her, but Jacob had a daughter by the name of Dinah, right? And she was a damsel. And what happened was that this young man, being the son of a king, he fell in love with Dinah. 
And when he fell in love with her, they had sex. I hope I'm talking to a mature audience here that can understand um, what I'm saying. And the Bible states it as rape, right? Depending on the the uh, the translation that you read. But in actuality, when you read the scriptures, you find out that Dinah and the young man was actually in love. And the young man wanted to please Jacob's house because he delighted in Jacob's daughter. He loved Jacob's daughter. So he said, I'm going to ask your father hands in marriage. I'm going to, I'm going to ask for, for your father to give me your, the blessing so that I can marry you. And the truth is that, that Jacob was going to allow for Dinah to marry the young man. He was going to allow that. But you know what happened? Simeon and Levi, they told them, okay, if you want to marry our daughter, and this is how you know too, that it was love that they had for, let me tell you something. This, this is how you know that it was love. Because when they went to the king and they spoke to the king, they said to the king, okay, if, if these are peaceable with us, if you are having peace with us and we are going to allow for our children to get married, what must we do? They said to the king, I want you to circumcise all of your men because it was a Jewish culture that you circumcise the boys, the foreskin of the boys. So they said to them, I want you to circumcise all the men to show that um, you are really with us and in peace with us and we will gi and give you our daughters. We will give you our daughters. And you know what happened? When the men circumcised, all the army men, all the men in the city circumcised themselves and said, we, are, we want peace. We want our son to be happy. He loves your daughter. We love our son. You know what Simeon and, 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 and Levi did? They went in and they killed every one of those men. Kill them. Kill them. Jacob was so mad. This is why when, when um, they were given the, the blessing, uh, when Jacob was given the blessing, he looked on Simeon and Levi and he gave them a curse. If you, if you read it, uh, when Jacob was on his deathbed, you'll see, I think that's in chapter 39 or so, you'll see that they, um, Jacob cursed them. Because he said, you guys are wicked, wicked. Mark it. The Bible said that the young man was more honorable than all of his father's house. Oh, my God. But because of where he is coming from, because of where he, what he is associated with, his good character was tarnished. How do we deal with these things as Christians? We must never seek to tarnish someone's character because of where they are coming from, because of how they grew up, because of the experiences that they had, because of what they're dealing with presently. We must never ever classify anyone based on what they are dealing with now or where they are. We must always look on men and women, but I'm just saying men for general terms here. We must always look on men through the lens 
are the eyes of hope, understanding that that there is there is hope for that individual and not because of what that person was associated with is associated with no that we should write them off because had simeon and levi not been judge and jury in this situation they would have seen that this man loved their sister and it also shows that they didn't even love their own sister because they don't want her to they didn't want her to be happy because all along she had nobody and here comes love and they kill her because they did not line up with what they they wanted right and so the Bible always lets us know, always gives us the definition that either men are more noble or someone is more honorable, right? Anytime, it doesn't matter if they are, if their name is, they, they, you know, um, it's, like, it's like, imagine for those of us from Jamaica that know about Dodos or Zeke's. It's like if Zeke's or daughter's son went to college now and become a lawyer or became a doctor or, or became someone, a teacher, and you go to school and you see that it is his son and you say, I don't want that one to teach my kid because I know his father. His father is a, is a dog-hearted murderer. As a child of God, we must not do that. We must not tarnish um, an individual's name. And for those of us who our names have been tarnished, um, I know certainly my name has been tarnished and people don't even know me. Um, but they do tarnish my name. And that's fine. What do you do in these cases? You, wait, it's not fine if someone tarnish your name, but if it does happen, right? It's, it's for us, we don't have to be so bothered by it that we lose our sanity. What we need to do is get to a place where we continue to do good. We continue to live right. And of course, you know, I have scriptures for that. Um, I could pull it up, but I want to continue this little teaching here that I started last week so that I can finish, um, try and finish today. But it's important that we continue to do good, continue to feed them, even though they talk against us, continue to love them, even though we know they don't like a bone in us, right? We do good, we do good. And I hope Presenter is hearing me. We do good. That's it, we do good. And I know these individuals that do these things, they usually turn around and when they find out who we really are, they usually even sometimes say to you stuff like, you know, all along I was hearing this, but when, when I come to the actualization or the realization, you're not that bad. You know, or they'll say things like, you know, I've never really, you know, noticed, but you're, you're not so bad looking. You know, you're an awesome young man. <laughs> You'll be amazed that the reason why they were all along saying stuff was because of what they heard. How your, your name was being tarnished. And so the Bible gives us um, examples of how we are supposed to live. All right? 
Now, we were primarily on dealing with Jabez, and we were saying that uh, when God gives us a name, right, it is associated with our character. Last week, we said in Proverbs 22 and verse 1, Proverbs 22 and verse 1, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. And we had broken that down in Proverbs 20. Um, we had broken that down and explained it in the NLT version in Proverbs 22, that choose a good reputation over great riches. For being held in high esteem is better than having silver or gold. So we said that we should choose a good reputation over great riches. For being held in high esteem is better than having silver or gold what we must never do is make an exam use riches to dictate how good or how well a reputation we have riches are never a good substitute to determine whether we are good or we are bad if we have a good reputation or a bad reputation we must always seek to choose a good reputation over great riches. We said that we came down, we spoke about some persons that had bad reputation. Like if we hear about Lucifer, if we hear about Jezebel, if we hear about um, Hitler, you know, it, it, there, there are some names that when you hear about, when you hear them, it, it clearly paints the picture of what not to do. And even if we have found ourselves somewhat doing or on that path, we know that that's not the path that we want to go. Mm -hmm. Someone said demon. You know, there was a time, uh, there was a time when um, some of these artists were coming out and with their songs and you know they, they they were putting demon in their song you know beyonce was one of them you know they were talking about stuff and 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 they know that it is associated with something bad and they flaunt it right they flaunt it in a in a in a means or with a means to uh per, you know align themselves to that lifestyle and to let you know that they are sold their soul they they don't care how things look anymore they are who they are and that's the lifestyle that they want to be associated with demons right and this is why we encourage our people not to sing those songs not to associate yourself with those songs. I've had, I've had um, someone, I've had someone, um, I'm trying to remember, yes, a pastor's wife, to be exact. And I've seen the pastor's children to doing it. It was what I was in church one time and I just hear on the phone because I'm happy. Because I'm happy. And when I looked, it was the pastor's wife that had the ringtone because I'm happy. You might say to me, Brother Ray, but nothing is wrong with that. It's just a happy song. Well, I believe that everything about it is wrong. So this is it. Love not the world, neither the things of the world. If any man love the, the world, or the things of the world, and the love of the Father is not in him. You love that happy song? That happy song is of the world. You're playing that. You're telling the saints in your church, 
it is okay to like a, 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 a worldly song, a song that's written by the world and to publicize it, even if you're in church. That's what you're telling them. And let me tell you, for every justif justification that you can put on that song, why it's not a bad song, remember, there's going to be especially a young person that's going to take that same song or other songs like Justin Bieber and say, why they don't think it's wrong to sing. They're going to take a Miley Cyrus song and tell you why they don't think it's wrong to sing because it does not have anything in it. But when you look on the lifestyle of these individuals, you realize that the songs that they sang was just a cover to lead you in, to subtly pull you in to what they are indulged in. I remember when Miley Cyrus decided that, listen, she's done with all of these Disney acting stuff. She's gonna unleash who she really is. You'd be amazed to see how much young people, especially in the church that got swept away because of those. Same with Justin Bieber. How many of our young persons in church, and they used to say, but nothing is wrong with it. It's just a Disney song. It's just a, a kid's song. When Justin started linking up with Selena and all of those stuff, and they were projecting their uh, teenage love or their young love, how many of the children in church started going after those stuff. Some even went as far to start questioning what's wrong with tattooing? What's, why can't we tattoo? You know, everyone is doing it. And some, some young persons even went and got tattooed. Got tattooed. And you'd be amazed. This is why we must not give no, um, What's the what's this, what's this thing? Room to the devil. Don't give no room to the devil. Parents, we have a duty not to play around. God has in, invested these children to us to lead them. And let me encourage you, grip them from their young so that they know the way, the path, and not wait until they're older than you're trying to curve them. And I'm sure everyone can relate here. And moving along, we spoke about how um, in the book of Acts chapter 12, the Bible said neither is Acts 4, sorry, and chapter 12, the Bible said, neither is there salvation in any other name, in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And so with Jesus, his character is associated with his, his name is associated with his saving character. He's able to save, he's able to deliver, he's able to set free. And so anytime we call on the name of Jesus, we think about salvation. This is evident in the Old Testament scripture, Isaiah 7. And verse 14. Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Okay? 
they said his name shall be called Emmanuel. Okay, I want you to listen to that part. Watch this. If Mary's son was to be called Emmanuel, why did she name him Jesus? I'm going to ask it again. If Mary's son, and anybody, do you know the answer? You can answer. If Mary's son, Mary being the virgin, son's name was supposed to be Emmanuel, why did she name him Jesus? No one. Okay. Because the name is the same thing. The names are saying the same thing. What does Emmanuel mean? It means God with us. What does Emmanuel mean? God with us. And Jesus means Yahweh saves. Jesus means Yahweh saves. So in other words, where God dwells, God saves. Where God dwells, he saves. Jesus is associated with salvation. So once Jesus is there, then you are being saved or you have been saved or you will be saved. And so anytime, that is why when we preach the name um, or we baptize, or we do anything, it must be in the name of Jesus. The Bible said, wherefore he dwells, he will bring salvation. Wherever the Lord dwells, he will bring salvation. And the list is endless to the persons that have received salvation. When you talk about um, blind Bartinimus, uh, he received this sight. Bible said to him, the Lord said to him, go and sin no more. When you talk about Lazarus, Lazarus was raised from the dead. When you talk about Mary Magdalene, anybody remember Mary Magdalene? Uh, she was said, he was said to her, woman, where are thou accusers? She's looked up on her own. She said, Lord, there is none. She, he said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. So wherever God is, wherever God dwells, salvation pulls up. Because it's either he's getting ready to deliver you, you, you are being delivered, or you have been delivered. Anybody remember Matthew, the tax collector? Or do you remember the woman at the well in Samaria? Anybody remember Jairus' daughter? How about the woman with the issues of blood? Yeah, I know that one. You must remember that one. Anywhere that Jesus is, that God dwells, then God saves. And this is why whenever you pull up in your jobs or you pull up to your workplace or you, whatever you are doing, this is why it's important that whatever you do, you do it all in the name of Jesus. Because he is the one that is centered, that our entire being, in him we live, we move, and we have our entire being. We dwell in him. He, we have taken on his character. Paul said, 
if um you know if i live yet not i but the christ who liveth in me so we become dead to ourselves and christ becomes our character his name becomes our identity and this is how we maintain a good name in our community In Isaiah 9 and verse 6, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Those are all characteristics that are associated with his name. The government was up on his shoulder, is still up on his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful. We know him as a wonderful person. We know him as a counselor. We know our Lord Jesus as the mighty God. We know him as the everlasting Father. What are his qualifications? What is on his resume. Does anybody know what is on the resume of the Lord Jesus? If we're talking about personality, he's perfectly balanced, he's wonderful. If we're talking about education, he knows all things, he's the counselor. If we're talking about nationality, he rules all nations, he's the mighty God. If we're talking about work experience, he created the heavens and the earth. He's the everlasting father. If we're talking about skills and, um, you know, what is he able to do? He's the reconciliation. Huh? He's able to bring peace. He's the prince of peace. What this world needs, this world needs the Lord Jesus Christ today. They need the reconciliation. They need the, the Prince of Peace to pull them into a place. They need the one who knows all things to counsel them. Oh my gosh. They need for the mighty God to rule in the affairs of man. Huh? Where do we use God's authority of his good name? We can use it, as Sister Santos was saying, in prayer this morning. For John 14 and verse 13 through the 14. John, St. John 14, verse 13 through the 14 said, And whatsoever we shall ask in my name, or whatsoever he shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If he shall ask anything in my name, I will do. Church, I believe it's time that we begin to mobilize our church, begin to set, send them out two by two into the world, just to pray, just to lay hands on people. Yeah, I know Corona is out there, we can still practice social distancing and, 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 um, and pray for people. We might just need to start, as Pastor Ray said last night, knocking on doors uh, of, of, of our neighbors and say, listen, listen, I know what's going on in the world today, but is it okay if I pray for you? Is, is it okay if I just share a word of prayer at this time? Because the Bible said, whatsoever things we ask in his name, we can ask the Lord to heal them. We can ask the Lord, oh, I'm feeling this in my spirit. We can ask the Lord, hallelujah, to save them, to comfort them. In the name of Jesus, we can ask God to deliver. Oh, my God. When we have prayed for them, this will present an opportunity for us to preach to them. 
And in this, God will be glorified. Hallelujah, to share the gospel. Luke 24 and verse 47 declares, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Huh? Repentance and remission of sins. Does the world need to repent? Yes. Is it only the police officers that need to repent? No. Everyone needs to repent. The looters need to repent. The, 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 the one that is propelling or pushing hatred need to repent. The ones that are, are, are bigots or the ones that are, are racist, they need to repent. But if we begin to pray for our nation, if we begin to pray for our neighbors, then we would be presented with the opportunity to preach to them. God can be revealed through his healing power because someone out here needs healing. I'm feeling this. Someone out here needs healing. Acts 3 and 6 declare, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Hello, somebody. When we begin to utilize and function in the character of God, it does not matter that sorrow was associated with her name in the past. Because like I said last week, what God is going to do, he's going to keep us with the same name. He's not going to say, oh, I'm going to change your name from, from, from Sister Santos. I'm, I'm going to change your name from Kayana. You're no longer going to be named Francis Johnston. No. What he's going to do is that he's going to use your name, use what you are going through right now, and he's going to turn it around. Put a spirit in you, and no longer will you be associated with that which is sorrow, but you will be associated with that which is honorable, that which is lovely, that which is of God, that which is representing the kingdom of God. That's what we need. Somebody needs healing. Acts 3 and verse 6, 16 declares, and his name through faith. In his name uh, made this man strong, whom he see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him uh, given him is perfect soundness in the presence of you all. By faith, we are going to be able to do this. We can do this. When you talk about receiving deliverance, Christ is revealed when we talk about people being delivered. Acts 16 and verse 18 declares, and this did see, and this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned unto, um, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee. In the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. So the woman, the damsel, she had a spirit within her. And this is why I told the church some time ago we have to be careful that even though we are upset and uh, uh, angry, about the fact that what is going on with George Floyd right now, we are very upset, but we got to understand that this is not that man. It wasn't the police officer. It was the spirit that was in the police officer. It was the spirit that was in the police officer. Do you know that that officer can go to jail and get filled with the Holy Ghost, be baptized in Jesus' name? that spirit can be cast out of him and that he in prison could turn around and start preaching to others so that they might be saved. That's why church, we have to be careful. 
I don't know how many of us as bridging, we really want to see people transform or we just want to associate them with the name that they're associated with. So we see police officers and we say, all police officers are murderers. All police officers are racist because they are police. Not knowing that a police might have in front of his name more honorable than his brethren. Not understanding that that politician might have before his name more honorable than all his brethren. That judge that you're thinking he's a racist judge and he's gonna just throw me in prison. He might have before his name more honorable. And that's why we must never look on men as mere men. But we must always discern the spirit that is within the man. Because not all white people are racist. Not all blacks are looters. Not all blacks are murderers. And not all of us as blacks are uneducated. And so, what we need to do is begin to speak as apostolics and command for these spirits to be lifted up off of these people. We need to go into our workplaces and speak, thus said the Lord. I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus, get up out of this building. Satan, the Lord Jesus rebukes you. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus. You do not have power and authority over my wife. You do not have power and authority over my husband. Devil, Satan, the spirit of anger, I speak to you in the name of Jesus. Get out of my child. My child is not a hungry bird. I command you now, get out. Oh, yes. Let me rush this off. Salvation is where Jesus Christ needs to be manifest in. We spoke about that. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And this is very important, church. Are you ready for this? This is why we baptize in Jesus' name. We baptize in his name. Y'all, we got to go out there and start baptizing some people. There are some people, it's not that they don't have zeal. It's not that they don't have love. It's just that they're not baptized in Jesus' name. They need to put on his name. Acts 2.38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, or the Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, of sins, and he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 10 and verse 48. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Acts chapter 19 and verse 5. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm telling you something. If we get out there and start praying for some people, if, if, if we get out there and start laying hands on some person, just asking them the question, do you want me to pray for you? Is it okay if I pray for you? I heard you earlier, Sister Marsha. You were in that bathroom and you were praying for that person. The Spirit of the Lord led, up, led you to do that. Led you to allow for your heart, hallelujah, to be, to, to be driven to the place of prayer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You prayed that spirit off of that person. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. We got to be sensitive to what God is doing in this season. I believe if we ever take the right approach, if as Pray Sanctuary, as Shiloh, as um, PAW, as, as UPCI, if we ever take the right approach, we will see 
a mighty revival in this time, in this season. God is getting ready to say somebody, oh my God. In all that we do, Christ must be manifest. Christ must be seen. Colossians 3 and verse 17 declare, and whatsoever he do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Hello, somebody. And whatsoever he do in word or deed. Because that's how somebody's going to know your name. Know the character that's associated with your name. Whatever you do in deed and in word. Somebody just unmute your mic and just worship God. Just go ahead and worship God. Hallelujah. If you're able to unmute your mic. Hallelujah. And just worship Jesus. Oh, glory. Oh, glory to his name. Oh, glory to his name. You are worthy, God. You are gracious. You are kind. You're tender hearted. You are good to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have been better to me than I've been to myself. Thank you, oh God, for bringing us into a place, oh God, where we can understand together, where we can dwell and reason together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, you are worthy, Jesus. Church, understand this. Philippians 2 and verse 9 declares, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord? Do you believe that you wear his character? Do you believe that he is in you and you are in him? Then if that's the case, my brothers and sisters, let's go out there and whatever we do in words or deed, let us do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, I'll open up the line. If there are any, any questions, if there are any comments, please say something. Let me know that you understand. Uh, go ahead at this time. Um, if you, if you can talk, you can type it. I hope I didn't move too fast. Um, Sister Kian, any question? Praise the Lord. <laughs> I um I don't have a question per se, but I do have a comment actually. Um, so one thing you said um, that I thought was important was that we should always look at men through the eyes of hope. 
And initially when you said it, I started to process exactly what that means. And um, I think that's symbolic because um, we should always have the mindset that people can be saved and there's always hope even in situations where you know you mess up or you turn away from God. So that that just struck me and caused me to ponder on it. That's my only comment. Amen. Amen. Because when we do that, when we when we look on individuals through the lens of hope, um, we remove condemnation from we help them to remove condemnation from themselves. Uh, because I, I'm sure we all can agree. I'm sure we all can agree if if um how you say it? If I mess up, right? If I mess up and and you know it is revealed that I mess up and stuff like that, then um you 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 don't even have to say anything to me. My guilt, my condemnation is already has already, you know, I'm I'm drowning in my condemnation. Okay. And so here I am joining in my condemnation and then you come and you or someone else comes and, and they say, yeah, man, it's a long time I know you are destined to do this. You are destined to fail. You are destined. Then what you have done, you have, you have sunk me deeper. You put a millstone around my neck and I'm just going down in the water. I'm trying to come up, but I'm just drowning. But here it is, you come with a word of hope and encouragement. You said to me, Brother Ray, you are not your mistake. You mess up, you fell short, but you were never your mistake to begin with. You were always God's. You are a child of the King. Then what you have begun to do is you have begun to penetrate that Thick darkness of condemnation and judgmental mindset and attitude. You have begun to penetrate it. And every day and every time when you come into Brother's Ray countenance or presence, you begin to penetrate and penetrate. You are God's design. God's going to use your mistake and he's going to help you to create this in a message. He's going to deliver you. You begin to push back, dispel the darkness, the forces of darkness, and you would have delivered that brother or that sister out of sin and condemnation. The Bible declares, I did not come to condemn the world, but that the world through me might be saved. Amen. Amen, Sister Santos. The healing process begins. And the change will come. That's true. That's true. Um, amen. Sister Marcia, you have a question or a comment? No, it's just a comment. Um, Turning to when you said it's not the spirit, it's not the the the, the police officer, it's the spirit. Because when I when I'm praying since this whole incident, I pray for the soul of that police officer, and I pray for him too, and I pray for his family because he didn't really go out there to plan to kill him, but the spirit, the the, the devil, used him to create an act. So. We have to forgive him too, and every police officer that wrong, every person, because we cannot dwell and live on bitterness, because if we don't ask God to forgive him and for forgiveness, then we're going to be in the same place. We're not going to move. We're going to be in the same spot if we're going to continue in anger and not ask God for forgiveness and pray for those who have hurt us. Amen. That's true. That's true. Um, there was a thought that was laid on my spirit this morning when I when I woke up. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that 
before when we were in Sunday school. And um, all being well weekend. All being well, um, I'm trying to see how best we can finish up this series um, that we're, we're dealing with on bitterness. But there, there, there are some thoughts um, that, you know, when I woke up with and meditating on the Lord, it, it came upon me. So I, I encourage everyone to be in Sunday school on Sunday evening, Lord's will. Um, let us reason together. Um, let us uh, continue our series that we've been dealing with. Um, uh, like I, like Sister uh, Marsha just said, that is true. We learned that bitterness um, stops our feet. In our discussion, in our Sunday school classes, we learned that. What it does, it cuts into our stump and it cripples us. Um, bitterness uh you know um, anger all of those stuff it it becomes clusters and it holds us you know cause us to be stuck i don't like i don't like being stuck i don't know about anybody else but i don't like being stuck you know i don't like being stuck and uh let me, can i say this too if you are if you are knowledgeable of someone, they are your friend, and you know that they are they have a bitter gall against someone else, whether it's a family, whether it's a friend, whether can I encourage you to encourage that person to let it go? You gotta if 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 God has given you the audience with that individual. I was talking to someone the other day, and they had a bitter, um, they had a bitterness against uh, uh, against a husband, not the wife, the husband, right? And I said to the individual, the husband and the wife is one. Now, you can't say you're going to talk to the wife, but you're not going to talk to the husband. Are you sure that, oh, the husband is behaving is not a result of the wife that is trying to protect her, um, her feelings, respect her wishes, respect that she is concerned about certain things? And the individual did not like that I wasn't going siding with them and saying, yes, throw, throw um, brimstone and fire. I did not. I said, you got to learn not to go into people's relationship with an intent to create division. If you're not into the husband, leave the wife alone. Because you, can, you cannot afford to create strife within the marriage. Then, of course, I didn't like that. <laughs> you know, them do them cut me off too. <laughs> Yeah, they caught me off too. It's fine. It's fine. Honestly, it's fine. Because, listen, I am not going to let anybody allow me or anyone allow me to become stuck, to become bitter, to, in my own mind, tarnish the character of an individual. No, I'm not doing that. And if I see that there is something that I think you can work on, I'm going to call you and I say, you know, I, I have a concern. Sister Rashid, I have a concern. If, 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 if Sister Rashid see that there's something about me that she has a concern, and I expect her to call me. I say, Brother Ray, I have a concern. Um, I didn't like when you said this. Or can you provide some clarity as to what you are alluding to when you said this? or when you did that. And of course, I should be ready to give an answer respectfully and, you understand what I'm saying? So we might not all do what the other individual might want us to do, but that does not mean that we, the individuals have a right to tarnish our character. 
if 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 they if we have done something and it has offended them, then they need to come and say, I I I don't think, you know, you did the right thing. Or right? I don't think that was the place or the time. And then allow me to explain, because you you there's always another side to the story that you might not even be privy to. And there can be some blessed consolation. But to go around and to say to this person, to that person, then what you're doing, you're tarnishing the character of the individual. You're not trying to address the situation. You're trying to justify what Sister Marshall just alluded to, the bitterness. Try to justify the bitterness. Try to justify the bitterness. That's not of God. So this is a good discussion. Really enjoyed these series that we've been dealing with for the last couple of weeks. I'll, I'll, I'll give one more person a chance to state a comment. Um, either Sister Tony and our Sister Santos. I'd love to hear from Sister Tony and there's anything that was said. That you need clarity on or question or comment. Sister Tony, is she here? Blessings, brother. Um, Blessings. I don't have a question or a comment. You must have a comment. Tell me one thing that was said in the thing that made you think or one thing that made you say, hmm. As I said before, I didn't have any comments or any questions. Um, most of what you said, it it's something that I've it, it resonates with me already. It didn't spark any thoughts. Um, but since you say that, I can relate to when you were talking about um when Brother Ray was um, talking last night on Bible study about talking to our neighbors and reaching out to them and asking them to pray for them, especially now being at home, you know, I feel like I personally have a desire to reach out more and to try to bring the word of God to, you know, people who are around me and give them an opportunity to, you know, hear more about God, you know, simply just asking them if, uh, I can pray for them or, you know, if they had a question. Um, I know one of my friends specifically was, you know, talking about everything that was going on, you know, and it, it was an opportunity for me to have a conversation about God with her. So, you know, with you saying that, it just kind of reminded me about that, um, that time, especially this time to just use it to bring the word of God to those um, who need to hear about him more. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Sister Tony. And of a truth, um, I've been feeling that burden too. And I've already started on it. You'd be surprised to know how many persons just want someone to talk with to at this time. Um, can I tell you a quick story? There was someone from, there's a United Pentecostal church by the name of Hope Center. Um, it's in uh, Illinois. And, um, what happened is it's, it's a mixed church, but predominantly white. Um, they went to the restaurant to pray not to eat sorry and one of the caucasian members uh saw a group of people around the table and they were eating they were laughing they were a mixed uh multitude but more primarily um primarily uh black um is a black guy that's married to a white woman okay so he went <laughs> 
and he touched the black guy on his shoulder. He touched the, the white guy from the United Pentecostal Church went and he touched the black guy on his shoulder. And he said, can I say something to you? And the wife, she's white, and she said she became so timid because of all that was going on. And she was like, oh my gosh, are they coming for my husband now? Not knowing who the guy was. And he said, I just want you to know, you guys are so looking so lovely. Um, you know, you guys are enjoying, enjoying yourself and your meal looks so delicious. And I just want you to know that what took place in Minneapolis, I am not in agreement. I do not condone that. And I just want you to know that I am praying for you. I am praying for your family. And if it's okay with you, I want to pay your bill. I want to pay your bill. And the bill was for, I think, $162 or something like that for the meal. And the guy paid the bill in full and he wrote on it, uh, we at Hope Center, we love you and are praying for you. You can look it up on, on, on Facebook. I'll, I'll send the, I'll find it and I'll send it in the chat so that persons can see it, the receipt. And what am I saying? One act of love. Hmm? One act of love has totally neutralized the fear of a, a, a mixed couple and also the friends that were around. To the point where those persons now are planning to be in attendance at church on Sunday. Yeah? And they are spreading it on Facebook and on other social media platforms, and they're saying these Christians at Hope, I think it's Hope Center, the churches are Hope Valley, something. But these Christians, they are real. They are true. It's not like what you're hearing. No. They are real. So I just want to encourage us. Let's 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 do something. Let's do something out of the ordinary as praise and prayer believers. And let's, let's, let's change a life. Let's touch a life. Let's impact a life positively. All right. Sister Santos, you had something you wanted to say? Or Sister Camille? If not, I'll turn back over to um, Sister Pauline to wrap up. But Sister Santos? No, no, sorry. No, um, Brother Ray, I think you have um, said it all of how the manner in which we're supposed to act and do things. Um, there's no more coming from me. I'm actually driving now to on the road. I had to leave the boat, so no comment. All right. All right, thank you, Sister Santos. And I see in the chat, Sister Camille says, said no comment or questions. All right, so Sister Pauline, I turn back over to you. Sorry, Junior, everything is well said today. And we thank God for another day fasting service. Bless the Lord Jesus, I'm sure each and every one have a takeaway from what we heard today from it started until the finishing up of it. Bless the Lord and we give God thanks for everything today. So at this time, we will just um, close off in prayer. Bless the Lord. Everybody, let's just pray. Unmute your mics and then let us all pray together. Dismiss all prayer. Oh, glorious God, we want to thank you for your love and your blood, your greatness, your goodness towards us, Jesus. We're keeping care 
and your tender mercies towards us, mighty God. We thank you for your words, mighty God, as you have been instilling in our hearts, Lord God. We thank you for your encouragement, Jesus. I pray, oh God, that you will continue to lead us, continue to guide us, continue to protect us, Lord God. Continue to cover us under your blood, Lord Jesus. Oh, glorious God, and I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will order our steps in your words, mighty God. Help us, Lord Jesus, to walk according to your will and to your way, mighty God. In the name of Jesus, continue to lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake, mighty God. And as we're about to go one from another at this time, Jesus, I pray you will go with us. Lord God Almighty, I continue to bless our homes, we pray. Continue, Lord Jesus, to bless the different family members.